Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are dialing in from. And uh, welcome to this uh, fourth webinar in the series of 10 on the topic of practical digital transformation, where over the past few months, this being the fourth session, we have introduced this idea of a comprehensive framework to manage an organization's approach to digital transformation. This is a framework that we have aggregated over the past five years or so of supporting organizations through the digital programs. This framework is currently readily implemented on RDOC as an enterprise architecture uh, platform and also extended using visualization tools such as the Microsoft Power BI and also SharePoint and WordPress where needed from a communication standpoint. Today's agenda for this fourth webinar will include a quick recap of some of the concepts we have covered to date. We will then quickly introduce the topic of tracking analytics, tracking the progress, tracking the maturity of an organization digital transformation program. And we will close with a Q&A session. My name is Stefan Nyango. I am CEO and Chief Architect at Architect. We are a primary RDOC partner as an organization, we specialize in uh, effectively supporting our clients in the endeavor, in the quest to transition to becoming uh, more potent, more efficient digital organization. I have been involved both in business and technology transformation for the best part of the, of the past uh, 30 years or so. With me today, my colleague Bilal. Bilal, if you could introduce yourself. Afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, my name is Bilal Wakar. I work at Architect as a platform and product manager. Uh, experienced across the board with regards to enterprise architecture suites and platforms, including the leveraging of such platforms for organization transformation. For today, I will be conducting a demonstration on RDoc with how we can leverage the framework that Stefan mentioned, as well as how we can start to use RDoc as a platform to generate uh, insights and analytics for an organization. Stefan. Thank you, Bilal. Getting into the gist of it right away, a quick recap of some of the ideas and concepts we have covered in the earlier sessions. Uh, we have put in our very first uh, webinar, this question of what it is that an organization should do in order to ensure that the digital transformation program is in fact set off on the right foundation. We have explained the significance of first making sense of the digital economy. This very idea that in reality, the need to transform is more than an organization strategy, is more than just a preference or a nice to have. Organizations do need to actually transform to become much more effective digital organization purely because there is a macro level economic development that is essentially this transition from the manufacturing economy as we know it today into this new economy that is a digital economy. Once an organization has made sense of the significance of this change, the significance of this new economy, the organization ought to then define what it is that this organization is aspiring to be as a digital organization. So a specification of the destination, a specification of the target for our organization as a digital organization. Following from which we stand a better chance to succeed in our transformation exercise. So some fairly uh, important fundamentals. First, make sense of the broader context that is the digital economy. Define, map out and clarify what it is you're aspiring to achieve to become a digital organization. What it is you look like as a digital organization 
only then you are to embark a bit more effectively onto this journey to transform. We have also covered some of the underlying competencies that a digital organization should essentially establish as foundation as a makeup of competencies for the digital organization. We've covered in our second webinar the fact that a digital organization is in fact a lot more competent at delivering far greater, far better engaging experiences to its ecosystem of customers, partner, and the market by and large within which this organization operates. A digital organization is a lot more potent at harvesting data, at using data as a source of intelligence and continuous improvement on, it, on its operation. A digital organization is equally very competent at running its processes, its transaction onto a digital business platform. These are three critical competencies of a digital organization. We have then introduced this idea of a digital organization canvas where we have explained using this reference model that a, an effective digital organization is truly a compilation of a grouping of 12 key areas of capabilities that this organization should be uh, competent at. So a digital organization will need to be competent across front-end channels, delivery experience, managing services, and managing digital marketing and communication parts of the front end. The digital organization is effective at managing its, its uh, digital workspace, the core business activities, a, a, a set of governance activities, but again, managed from a digital standpoint and a digital back office. And across this front end and core capabilities, the digital organization is truly effective at digital interoperability, brokerage, digital security, digital intelligence, digital IT. These 12 domains make up a reference model for an organization to specify its destination, its target, as we are aspiring to become a digital organization, we could leverage this digital uh, organization canvas as a means to define this destination we so desire to achieve. We have also introduced through the earlier uh, webinar uh, session that we've conducted, this idea of a digital transformation management framework. This is a framework that as an organization we have aggregated over the past five to six years of supporting organization through the digital journeys. This DTMF framework, this catalyst framework as we call this internally, includes 10 very specific toolkits that are intended to together help effectively plan, design, operate, execute an organization digital program. And through these uh, webinar series, we are running through addressing, explaining, covering these toolkit one after the other. Today being the fourth, say, the first webinar in this series of 10, we will be looking at transformation analytics. What it is that an organization should be measuring as it undergoes its digital program. How do we know we are indeed becoming a digital organization and what are the ramifications of this digitalization on our organization bottom line? This is in fact the topic of today's demonstration as part of this webinar. So getting into it, digital transformation, what metrics we see and uh, having just now explained that uh, three critical competencies of the digital organization include our ability to manage digital experience at the front end, our ability to harvest and leverage data, our ability to deliver our business transaction and processes over digital platforms. We typically advocate at least these three key areas of metrics that needs to be tracked, monitored, and observed as part of an organization transition into becoming a digital organization. Given that we have this foundation to become a more effective organization in terms of experience delivery, an example metrics we could actually uh, monitor and track will be this customer li lifetime value or similar matrices that measure the value we are delivering as we engage over our respective channels with our clients. So CLV is an interesting example of a front-end KPI that a digital organization ought to be tracking 
to understand the effectiveness of his ability to deliver on an improved experience to his client. Looking at our ability to deliver our business transaction over digital business platforms, we ought to understand the degree to which we are automating workflows within our organization. And an example KPI being measured there will be this SVR, the Service Accuracy Index. Given that a digital organization is a lot more potent at using data, harvesting data, yielding intelligence out of data, we also see a third grouping of KPIs around the ability of an organization to react to market changes leveraging data. And one such KPI we could measure in this category will be the advisory index, our ability to understand the market, our ability to understand our operational responsiveness vis-a-vis -vis market changes, market demands. Given that we have established these three dimensions of outcome matrices that an organization ought to look at as part of a digital journey, we have reverse engineered these outcome-driven matrices into matrices that an organization should track along the journey as part of the digital program. Today's demonstration using RDOC as a central architecture repository to manage your digital transformation will portray three critical dimension of digital transformation analytics as we present these to our clients. In the very first part of the demonstration, we will be looking at the maturity of an organization as this organization evolves into becoming a digital organization. In other words, how digital am I becoming as I undergo my digital program? The second part of our demonstration, we look at the health of our digital program portfolio, the set of projects, the set of initiative, the set of use cases we implement as part of our transformation. How effectively are we running these project and how have it taken us into the so desired digital destination. In the third demonstration, we will portray an aggregation of these analytical matrices we'll be demonstrating in part one and part two into an integrated executive dashboard that could be presented to summarize the overall health of our digital program. So free part to this demonstration of analytics as we use these analytics to underpin, to understand, to have a far better insight as to how well we are progressing on our digital journey. I will hand over to my colleague Bilal, for Bilal to take us through these three demos on the analytics of a digital transformation program. Over to you, Bilal. It's fine, just sharing my screen. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, we are. Great. So as Stefan mentioned, we have essentially configured three scenarios or three primary use cases for analytics, leveraging the digital transformation framework that was just covered by Stefan, focusing on maturity, how mature is an organization, portfolio analytics, and executive analytics. The first section being digital program maturity analytics essentially focuses on how do we understand, or rather, how do we take the definition of digital capabilities for an organization that is defined using the digital canvas? And how do we rate or measure an organization against this particular model, such that we can understand the current state of the organization against a particular framework, such as the digital canvas? And then how do we target areas for optimization, leveraging the RDOC platform? So switching into RDOC now, we essentially start with the digital transformation framework configured within Arda, focusing on our analytics toolkit. So essentially we will be using our digital transformation analytics toolkit to understand how we can leverage insights or develop insights against the various toolkits that we have within our particular framework. And how do we use this to ensure that the organization is in fact achieving digital transformation aspirations. We start with the digital canvas the model that was covered in brief by Stefan during this demonstration and which we have covered in depth during the previous webinar series. 
By way of brief summary, the digital canvas presents digital capabilities for an organization to ensure that all of the requirements, all of the key considerations from a digital perspective, from a digital point of view for the organization are being considered and are in fact driving the organization transformation definitions and requirements. If we zoom in on one particular layer, such as the channels layer, we can see that we have various capabilities here highlighted in white. And we can see the various capabilities from a channel perspective that an organization should mature, should take control of, and should essentially instantiate within the organization to manage digital channels. But how essentially is an organization supposed to do this? How are we supposed to measure the organization performance or maturity for a given capability? We can take a capability and define a capability from an architecture perspective as an organization's ability to do something or execute a particular activity, a capability to do something. We can then break down or decompose a capability into three key dimensions, such as, or rather uh, the, the key dimensions being people. Does the organization have effective personnel to deliver, manage, and fulfill these capabilities? Processes, does the organization have the effective methods to execute these particular capabilities? And technology, does the organization have the appropriate systems, the appropriate platforms, the appropriate level of automation as is declared by a given capability to ensure that a particular capability is effectively being managed? So with these three key dimensions being people, process, and technology, we can start to rate each of these capabilities for a given organization. Uh, engaging or executing what's referred to as a maturity analysis. Here we have a <coughs> here we have a filtered view of the digital canvas focusing on the digital channels domain. So just to quickly go back, we have 12 key domains across the digital canvas. We are focusing on one key domain being digital channels, but the same analysis could be leveraged for interoperability, for security, for compliance, and so on. Here we have the digital channels and we are showing a maturity heat map view, which is indicated by the color coding on each of these capabilities from a people dimension as is illustrated over here. We are essentially rating the organization's maturity from, or rather we are rating the organization's capabilities from the people dimension. And if we enable the legend within RDoc, we can understand the current levels of heat map and we can or rather the levels of maturity and we can start to identify where the organization may have key gaps in their operation. We can see here that a capability that is colored in black is essentially at a level zero, excuse me, at a level zero of maturity. We can see that a capability colored in red is at level one and so on and so forth and up until the fifth level of maturity, which is the which is essentially the organization is fully managing this particular capability from the given dimension being the people dimension. We can start to understand how this particular analysis, or rather we can start to understand how the particular organization is being affected from this particular dimension and start to identify key gaps that may exist within the, in, within the organization. In a similar fashion, this being the people dimension analysis, we can start to analyze from a process perspective and we can start to see the picture change slightly. We can start to see that in fact, where certain capabilities may have the correct personnel, they may not have the effective processes to execute these particular capabilities. In a similar fashion, we can see from a technology perspective, the landscape currently changes as well. We can see that an organization may have the appropriate solutions. They may have been a particular platform that was acquired in order to automate or deliver this particular capability. However, the personnel or the actual processes that govern the execution of these capabilities are not well defined or not well executed within the organization. We can use this, to, as I mentioned, to start to frame key areas of gaps or opportunities for an organization looking to improve their channels capabilities. And we can see here, channels analytics, channel security, currently having major technology gaps. We can start to identify where the organization would like to focus based on various requirements analyses and start to drive capability transformation. One method of enabling this particular review or this, or rather one, one method of enabling this particular maturity analysis within RDoC is through the survey or data collection um, function within RDoC. So RDoC essentially has a feature that allows, that allows organizations to interact with the particular data. And this particular feature is referred to as RDoC surveys. Switching into 
R doc surveys now, we can see that we have here an R doc survey. So if I were to interact with this particular survey, in this case, the digital survey, let me just quickly log in over here. Yeah. So essentially, I can see here that I have a configured survey to assess the digital capabilities. What we're looking at over here, what we're looking at over here is essentially each of the key domains of the digital canvas to which I can filter to particular capabilities. So I'm going to click on my digital channels as this is the focus of our assessment. And I can see all of the various capabilities that were currently being analyzed, as well as the various maturity assessment levels that have been set against given capabilities. I can go to the second page and I can see, once again, the various maturity analysis that has been set. I can now start to interact with the data. So I can essentially say, for example, I'd like to review my channel security. I can see that my channel security is currently part of the channel's governance key grouping or key subdomain as we refer to it. And I can start to optimize or adjust the particular assessment as is required. I can start to, right, let me exit full screen here, and I can essentially start to analyze for a given capability. I can say that for a particular dimension, I would like to essentially affect or change the particular rating that has been provided against a particular dimension. So if I quickly switch back into the, into the maturity analysis view, I can see that currently channel security is indicating a red heat map or a red maturity level, which indicates that it is currently at a level one of maturity. Following analysis and alignment within the organization, I can understand that this particular capability should in fact be at the very least an L3 level of maturity, given that the existence of technology is prevalent and the organization is able to execute this particular capability. What I can then do is for the technology function, which is currently showing at L1, I can review the various criteria that are provided for a particular maturity level, and I can start to update the particular maturity. So now at an L3 level, I can submit my assessment. I can see now that my technology maturity for channel security is now at an L3 level. And if I were to go back to our particular presentation and refresh our particular model, keeping in mind that channel security was previously red at L1, channel security is now yellow at L3. So this essentially is a view of how we can take the maturity assessment of a given capability, develop the maturity landscape or the maturity heat map for the organization against three key dimensions, and then start to manage and maintain this particular maturity assessment using the various RDoc features and functionalities, including presentations as well as RDoc surveys as well. This particular, particular analysis could be done against any capability such as IoT devices and so on and so forth, and within any of the key domains that were previously mentioned, such as compliance or interoperability, as well as any of the other domains in the digital canvas. Using this particular method, we can start to identify, as, 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 as was mentioned, key gaps, key areas that the organization currently manages, and we can start to frame true digital transformation uh, aspirations and transformation goals for the organization. This was a view of how we are able to measure and manage maturity for an organization using our particular framework. The next, the next piece of analytics or the next piece of, um, of the framework with regards to analytics is focusing on how we can start to analyze the portfolio of an organization. Portfolio is essentially are groupings of data or groupings of assets within an organization and how we can start to analyze and bring clarity to the current state or status of a given portfolio within an organization. So now moving into the next demonstration, back into our framework, focusing on the analytics toolkit, we have essentially two, uh, two supporting pieces of uh, information with regards to uh, the analytics demonstration for portfolios. And we will be starting with this here, we will be starting with a view of the organization twin, which is essentially bringing together all of the various assets and portfolios that exist within an organization. This particular demonstration has been covered during previous webinar series, but essentially we are able to take once again our digital canvas full of digital capabilities. We are able to map these capabilities to organization artifacts, in this case, applications. And we can start to see that for a given capability, we have applications. We can then see that for this particular capability, for an application, 
this particular application is leveraging various databases and data sources. We can then see that once again, a capability to an application to information has various pieces of data entities and data subjects as well. And this is essentially building a digital twin view of a particular capability and applying this analysis to the entire organization, to the entire set of capabilities, we build a digital twin view. Once we have this digital twin view established within the organization, essentially we need to understand what this particular landscape means. So we have this uh, labyrinth of information that is currently captured within the architecture repository within RDOC, but we need to understand how we can start to use this information. We are able to then take this information and build our <coughs> and build particular presentations and dashboards that allow us to consume and understand the key status of that particular portfolio. In this case, we are focusing on applications. However, this particular analysis can be extended to, for example, customer channels, customer experience portfolios, customer service portfolios, uh, and so on. We have our architecture insights dashboard here being presented, currently split into three sections, being bringing visibility to the landscape of the portfolio, bringing visibility to the impact of the portfolio against other organization systems and data sets and portfolios as well. So how is this portfolio essentially impacting or connecting to other organization pieces of data and how we can start to optimize this particular portfolio. We start first with bringing visibility to the landscape of the portfolio and we can start to see an RDoC dashboard here configured against the applications landscape. We can understand various information about the total number of applications in our landscape, the various cost parameters around our particular applications, as well as some indicators whether we are over or under budget as well, here indicated in red and green. Red being over budget and green being under budget, of course. We can then start to build various pie chart views of particular information within the portfolio and start to build a cohesive picture that allows us to understand the state of applications, the current various technical aspects of given applications, as well as various parameters around evaluation and recommendation, as well as various information about recommendation timelines or other recommendation over time. We can start to build this view and this will essentially allow key stakeholders within a given organization to start to understand at a glance on a page how they can start to manage their particular application portfolio, bringing visibility to the landscape. Our next section focuses on the impact of a given portfolio against the organization. So our previous, our previous set of, uh, of dashboard information allowed, it, allowed us to understand the current state of applications. However, the impact of applications should be judged as well, such as the impact of applications around various pieces of organization information. And this is what we're seeing over here, which is essentially applications against various pieces of organization information. While this view might look essentially uh, fairly populated and fairly complex, we can essentially see through the RDoC legend that in this particular view, we have applications as well. We have, let me bring that back over here. We have applications, we have supporting application information, various impacts against business portfolios, such as the various departmental resources, stages of activities, data entities, capabilities, technical configuration information, and so on. We can start to map these particular portfolios to these particular pieces of information and start to understand for a given application, is there defined pieces of information? Or for particular applications, there is currently lack of information and start to focus on building this particular portfolio, uh, this particular cohesive and comprehensive portfolio. This essentially allows us to understand how we can manage the impact of an application, assuming that a particular application may be impacted by a particular, let's say, disruption of uh, not being available within the organization for any number of reasons. We can start to understand if this particular application were to be impacted, what is the impact against the organization, as you can see over here. The final piece of the dashboard, we bring up the description view. The final piece of the dashboard is section three, which essentially is how we can start to optimize this particular portfolio. So we've brought visibility to the portfolio. We have brought visibility, visibility to the impact of the portfolio against the organization. And now we would like to essentially begin optimizing and building this particular portfolio. 
we can start to understand the key data objects that make up this particular portfolio, such as an application, and using the RDoC, RDoC features, which is referred to as a data modeling feature, we can start to understand the key data definitions that make up this particular portfolio, here focusing on applications. And we can start to see the current gaps that may exist within a piece of data. And we can start to understand that four particular attributes or four particular pieces of information, shall we say, which particular applications are currently fulfilling or rather have all of this information populated and for which pieces of information all of this information is missing. And we can see this particular view here. And once again, start to target the optimization of the portfolio. This essentially allows us to take a particular portfolio, build a cohesive view within the organization repository and start to analyze it to improve the, to improve the overall organization uh, operation of this particular portfolio. This was a view of how we can build digital program portfolio analytics, focusing on visibility, impact and optimization. Excuse me. And finally, we have essentially the digital program executive analytics, which is essentially how we can take the various insights that we develop, not only from maturity and portfolio, but across all of the various streams of activities within the architecture repository, and how we can start to build this for consumption within the organization. Once again, the digital transformation framework. And we start with essentially a quick view of digital or rather of business KPIs. And essentially what we're presenting over here is a view of strategic KPIs having been designed to track and monitor business performance within an organization from three key perspectives. We essentially use this particular, these particular KPIs having been defined by Gartner. And we essentially take these particular KPIs and we start to understand how we can leverage this particular view of KPIs for organizations to ensure that these particular business business related KPIs are in fact being met or, or, or used by an organization. We then take this information and we essentially start to understand which particular KPIs would be most significant to an organization. And we use this information as well as all of the preceding information that was just presented. We integrate this information with Microsoft Power BI a advanced analytics and intelligence solution, which has an integration with RDoC to consume the data that is captured and stored within the RDoC repository and presented through Microsoft Power BI. We use this approach to design executive reports and executive dashboards to enable the organization to not only understand and consume the insights in a easy manner, but also to be able to make decisions and start to understand the current state of their organization and use this for better and more enhanced decision making. We start by defining the dashboard through declaring the overall approach to the particular dashboard. We start once again with the digital canvas being a major anchor within transformation aspirations to ensure that capabilities are in fact being matured. We define the overall approach taken, which is leveraging the digital canvas as a, a single source of transformation truth to understand capabilities, as I mentioned, to be matured. We then have particular headlines of maturity for a given organization. In this case, we are focusing on the digital IT department or digital IT domain. This particular style of reporting or this particular approach to reporting can be leveraged across the organization, but here focusing on the IT uh, domain of the digital canvas. We can start to understand that there are key headlines that exist within the particular organization, such as, as previously illustrated, the number of applications, again, being the same number that was shown in the applications dashboard being 92, but here essentially presenting the information in a particular design of this particular dashboard. The number of capabilities that the organization is concerned with from an IT perspective, transformation initiatives, as well as KPIs that are currently being tracked and measured, as well as supporting information that is here illustrated. Once we present the headlines of the current maturity state, where is the organization, or rather where is digital IT today for the organization, we can start to bring some deeper visibility against this from a aggregated perspective. So we can start to understand from a digital IT perspective, not only from our application maturity, but various architecture domains, we can start to understand the current maturity metrics or the current maturity measurements of this particular of this particular organization's digital IT domain, as well as the very 
once we understand where the organization is today from a, from a maturity perspective, where the organization is from a deeper maturity perspective, we can start to diagnose where the organization may have key gaps in their particular operation. And this is what is being here presented. Once we understand where the organization is today, so just by way of quick summary, where the organization is today, key visibility information, what is ailing the organization, we can start to design, once again, the optimization from a holistic perspective to understand the key initiatives of transformation that will improve the maturity state of this particular organization's digital IT domain. And we can see some initiatives that are here illustrated. And finally, we can start to use the, the, the metrics and the measurements to understand where the organization stands from a KPI perspective and how these particular KPIs are being, are being measured, the current state of these particular KPIs. And we can see that we currently have two KPIs that are currently at risk of not meeting their particular thresholds, their particular target values, and 10 KPIs that are currently on track and are essentially meeting their particular requirements. So overall, we can use these, this particular dashboard approach or rather this approach to intelligence for the organization. We can build a view of the organization within the architecture repository from concepts such as digital twin, such as maturity analysis as was previously as was previously illustrated, as, as well as the various insights that were, that were aggregated. We can take all of this information and aggregate this information into an intelligence platform such as Microsoft Power BI, as well as other platforms that may exist within an organization. And we can design a approach to executive reporting to ensure that all of this insight is in fact being used to to affect decision-making within the organization and to ensure that the organization is able to, to, drive, to, to drive transformation for their particular aspirations being the digital canvas maturity uh, and capability maturity as well. This was a, a demonstration of the various methods of analytics focusing on maturity portfolio and executive analytics. Many more streams of, or rather multiple streams of analytics use cases exist but here are presented these three portfolios. At this stage, I will hand over to Stefan and um, for, for some final, fi final comments as well as open for, for any questions as well. Stefan. Thank you, Bilal. Uh, Bilal, if you allow me to share my screen again. Sure. Okay, so by way of recapping, uh, it is our view that uh, digital transformation is certainly a fairly critical agenda item for most organizations today. However, uh, it is not necessarily to be considered as an end game. Ultimately, the intent and the need to transform is to result into a far better performing organization that is competent within this new emerging digital economy. In other words, it is quite important to focus our digital program, our digital initiative toward a number of very explicit business metrics, business KPIs, business indicators that are tracking success as they are defined as part of our business model or as part of our strategy. These three areas of matrices we discussed uh, earlier before the demo are put forth as illustration of the areas that needs to be considered as a second layer of matrices for an organization that is transitioning into becoming a digital organization. So whilst we have a number of very significant business matrices we want to look at, uh, ranging from revenues to uh, profit to margin and others, from a digital standpoint, it is important to understand how we are performing around these key areas of competencies for the digital organization. How are we performing in terms of experience? How are we performing in terms of our use of data? How are we performing in terms of our ability to deliver our business processes, our business transactions over digital platforms? These 
grouping of KPIs and indicators are in fact pushing forth this idea that a digital transformation program is in itself an optimization exercise that ought to look at various portfolios across our organization and identify how do we transform these portfolios of capabilities, inclusive of processes, of technology, of data, of people, of structures, indeed a whole host of portfolios that ought to be optimize in a very specific direction toward better business outcomes as we become a digital organization. Hence, the need to understand the significance of a, an approach such as the one we have put forth today, using RDOC as a repository, taking a true data-driven approach to our digital transformation. How do we understand our organization as a portfolio of capabilities of asset? Such a portfolio is to be, or such a set of portfolios ought to be optimized in a very specific direction. We specify using, for example, our digital organization canvas. The collation of data insight around our organization portfolios in such a way that we are able to optimize the various aspects of portfolios making up our organization moving into this digital direction. But also equally important, the need to aggregate all of this intelligence, all of this data that is driving our transformation toward decision points that are made by stakeholders across our organization. It is not only critical to undergo such a transformation, but it is equally important to sustain our transformation. And one of the critical uh, paths to sustaining our transformation is to engage with key decision makers, gaining visibility into these decision makers as to the effectiveness of our transformation, the contribution of our transformation towards strategic objectives, the opportunity to even do even more by understanding the effectiveness of our portfolios, hence guiding and attracting even more investment from the leadership of our organization towards supporting, investing and sustaining our digital program. So this was a bit of a recap as to how to look at your digital transformation program truly as a data initiative in itself a data initiative that is targeted at optimizing a portfolio of asset capabilities that make up our organization on a continuous basis, but toward a set of clearly defined outcome and aspirations. At the tip of which we have our business KPIs, our business strategy, our business indicators, but behind which we have our ability to effectively deliver on a far greater experience to our ecosystem on our ability to run our business considering data as the most critical assets, our ability to deliver our business transactions over these digital, digital business platforms that are now emerging as an alternative to the traditional brick and mortar that, were, that are still prevalent in the manufacturing economy. But as we transition into this digital economy, the significance of digital business platform as the primary location to conduct our business processes and business transactions becoming a critical outcome to aspire to as part of our digital program. This was a bit of a recap of today's webinars insight. How do we begin to look at our digital program, in fact, as a data program that allows us to have this insight, guide, improvement, and essentially deliver a set of improved outcome for our organization to be a lot more effective within this fast growing digital economy. At this point in time, I will open up uh, the uh, webinar to capture a poll. We will now publish on your screen, a poll to capture your perspective, your takeaways from today's webinar centering on the use of data, the use of analytics as a key driver or enabler for a digital program. You should now see on your screen a poll. We will leave this poll running for a few seconds, about 30 seconds or so if you could cast your vote. 
Bilal, are you able to see this poll on your screen? Yes, I can see this. I can see the poll. Cool. If you could cast your vote. What key takeaways, what key perspectives? We are keen to understand your perspectives, your views, your experience as you undergo your own respective digital programs. As we are now closing the poll, we will switch over to a Q&A session. We do have about 10 minutes for Q and A's. We can take a few questions before we close for today's webinar. There are a few questions coming in. I will run through these questions and we'll provide some initial answers. Uh, there is a first question here asking how often should organization assess their maturity and update their digital strategies. How often should an organization assess their maturity and update their digital strategies? This is indeed a fairly interesting question. Uh, one key characteristic that is emerging as the global economy is transitioning from the manufacturing, the industrial manufacturing economy as we know it into this new digital economy, a key characteristics, a key characteristic we are observing as impacting organization across the globe, across uh, economic sectors, across industries, is the fact that the velocity, the uh, scale of changes that are coming with the digital economy are not necessarily uh, uh, temporal. We see these as continuous pressures on organizations to change almost on a continuous basis. And de facto, we then advise our clients to consider the digital transformation no longer as a start and stop exercise to be conducted every five years, but rather a continuous business function. So just like we have a HR department within our organization or a customer services department, it is in fact important for organization to start to consider the establishment of a transformation office as an ongoing department, as an ongoing function within their, their organization. As such, we need to be able to conduct a continuous review of where we stand in our digital transformation journey. How mature have you become after uh, uh, delivering a number of projects? So the assessment for an organization, uh, uh, digital maturity in itself becomes almost a continuous activity, continuous exercise. Hence, we need to adopt and onboard such tools as the RDoC data-driven platform that allows us to, using the sort of framework we've had here demonstrated, continuously collect data about our organization, leveraging these ideas of a digital twin in such a way that we have a continuous view of where we stand as a digital organization. So the output, the dashboard should be continuous, but the actual assessment activities to refresh this data can be done, uh, if you want, on a quarterly basis. The key point here is to understand that your digital transformation is no longer a start-stop initiative. It is a continuous activity within your organization. We have a question, a follow-up question that says, thank you for the session, very informative. Here's a question. How are, how are the digital canvas domain designed? Bilal, do you, do you want to pick up this question? How sure. are the digital sure. canvas domains? Sure, thank you. Thank you for the question. Essentially, the, the key domains of the digital canvas are in fact designed uh, using uh, a number of parameters. Some of the key parameters that we consider in the design and uh, maintenance as well as refresh of these digital canvas is essentially the impact of, uh, or rather the consideration of best practices within the, within the, let's say, landscape of the key domain. So for example, we can, we can consider the IT domain and understand that there are various best practices 
that affect this particular digital domain, such as COBIT or, or ITIL and various other frameworks. And we use this to help shape key considerations for the particular for the particular domain. We can then understand that for a given domain, such as the core domain, there are various industry considerations, such as how the particular industry were to operate and how we can identify the key capabilities that are required for a given industry. These are established as well through industry references, industry frameworks, and industry architectures that exist through, uh, through um, various libraries, libraries that we have collated as well. And then we also use uh, and then we also have access to essentially subject matter experts within key uh, within key domains, and we can essentially align the development of each of these capabilities with the the particular let's say experts in the industry to ensure that these capabilities are well defined. Thank you, Vila. So, in essence, the digital canvas is an aggregation of best practices coupled with input from subject matter experts for specific industries and vertical. Thank you, Bilal. Bilal, here's another question. How can we assess, uh, access the RDOC survey features? How to gain access to the RDOC survey features? Sure. So the RDOC survey feature is a uh, module within the RDOC platform. Uh, essentially, this is part of a license uh, configuration of the RDOC platform. We will uh, essentially capture this particular question and reach out with uh, this particular license information um, and, and essentially RDOC, um, RDOC related information uh, as well on the platform. So essentially, it, it is a RDOC feature that is accessible through the uh, acquisition of the RDOC platform. Bilal, another question is, uh, how are the dashboards designed in RDOC? I believe uh, part of this demonstration uh, conducted today, we have portrayed a set of dashboard and report within RDOC, as well as a set of dashboard within Power BI, Power BI interfacing via APIs into RDOC, right? Uh, the question here is, how are the dashboard designed in RDOC? Sure. So, so essentially within uh, within Ardo, so we we essentially have uh, sets of pieces of data that exist within the uh, within the Ardo platform. We use the dashboarding feature that is existing within Ardo, and we start to uh, develop key um, key outputs uh, as was illustrated illustrated today, we, we use the portfolios that exist in the repository. We create essentially. Um, various parameters around each of these pieces of data. And then we instruct the dashboard module to display the information through various tiles, pie charts, uh, timeline charts, uh, as well as the other analytics pieces available in the platform. And this is how we can manage the RDoC uh, dashboards. With regards to Power BI dashboards, we essentially use the API feature within RDoC to integrate with Microsoft Power BI. We share the information uh, or within the RDoC repository to the Microsoft Power BI platform. And then we work with the Power BI platform configurations that are available as well. Thank you, Bilal. Bilal, here's another question, uh, an interesting question here. What benchmarks are used for digital maturity? And, and I think uh, even though we are beginning to see the emergence of uh, digital uh, transformation framework, uh, there is an open group framework. We are beginning to see various a framework emerging, there isn't yet a clearly established standard that defines what truly is a digital organization. So what we have as part of our digital transformation framework is, as we explained earlier, an aggregation of best practices that is used to define the set of capabilities that will make up a digital organization. What we've, we've then done as part of, as an extension of our definition of capabilities is we have created uh, an internal benchmark using our framework, uh, using our definition of the capabilities within our framework. So, so far, at least to date, within our Catalyst framework, we have embedded a basic benchmarking uh, uh, structure that is used to assess an organization maturity against the various level of target maturity. So following a CMM type 
maturity model in terms of level zero for ad hoc, level one for managed, level two for uh, optimizing and others, we have defined various levels of uh, uh, criteria that have to be met. So our framework as deployed on our doc comes with a built-in benchmark uh, purely because there isn't yet a fully established external standard defining a digital organization and the implication in terms of measurement and KPIs. Bilal, here's another question. How do we distribute, how do you disseminate analytics, uh, the analytics insight within an organization? How do we go about presenting these analytics, these analytics out of the uh, transformation program, the transformation analysis across the organization? Sure, so once we have these uh, pieces of insights, these reports, these dashboards developed across the uh, suite of platforms that we use as part of the digital transformation management platform, one key arm or one key, uh, essentially uh, one key component of the, of the digital transformation platform is the engagement component that allows us to engage with the organization. And this particular component is managed through CMS platforms or content management uh, solutions. And these are essentially your web portals as well as uh, communication uh, websites as well. And we design and develop these as part of the platform. And we use uh, the features that exist in these portals to embed and integrate the various insights, access to the various reports, informative uh, information such as FAQs, guides, and user support to essentially onboard and share the insights that have been developed so that particular stakeholders uh, can understand which particular insights are related to their operations, which particular pieces of information are relevant for them. And we use the, the Engage or, or CMS uh, component of the platform to, to distribute and disseminate insights for the organization. Thank you, Bilal. I think it is also important to note that uh, the uh, business of transforming, the business of digital transformation should not be seen in isolation or as a ivory tower sitting over and above the organization ongoing operation. As such, it is important to embed the analytics, the decision-making insight that is generated out of the uh, transformation program, the transformation framework and tool as we here demonstrated into the organization ongoing analytics dissemination uh, uh, framework, if you want. So whereby an organization, for example, has a board meeting that takes place once a quarter, once a month, whereby an organization has a governance forum that is held uh, on a biweekly basis, whereby executives, managers, uh, directors within an organization start or end the week with a review of a number of indicators. The aspiration from the digital team should be and shall be to position this insight into the existing organization governance, insight and analytics practices. So it is quite important not to look at the analytics of your transformation as uh, a separated set of uh, analytics, but rather embed into the ongoing practices within your organization. We have come to the end of this webinar. Uh, we could probably take one more question, but uh, at this point in time, we would like to thank you all for your attendance to this webinar. This was the fourth webinar in a series of 10. We will be posting the recording of this uh, fourth session onto our uh, YouTube channel and uh, our various social media channels. We'll be sharing the links with uh, all of the uh, subscribers that attended the session today and the ones that could not. For the next session, we will look at the digital transformation management office. What should be the makeup of your transformation office? And what sort of structure we, do we have within this office? What sort of competencies? How do we go about uh, a, uh, an approach to manage our entire transformation from planning, design, oversight, activation, and ensuring that they are indeed able to deliver on the desired outcome of the organization. Thank you for attending. We look forward to see you again 
on our next uh, webinar session. And you can also rerun through these sessions by visiting our website and uh, our YouTube channels. Thank you for your attendance. Thank you. Good day.